Hi there, and welcome to the low budget ZTO H500 Resto Part 3. Now, I know there's been, it's been a few weeks since I've been around, but uh, you know, there were things in life that I had to take care of, and plus, uh, I ran into a little bit of a surprise on the, uh, the chassis we got started. So, uh, let's get started. The original Selenium rectifier, I've got a jumper lead here or a, a clip lead here and a clip lead on the end of this resistor. The original resistor on here was in very poor condition and it's falling apart. So I have in another original one here right now that I've got clipped on just to test and we'll check and see uh, where everything stands on the radio. Okay, I think what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the meter or leave the camera focused on the two meters. Now again the meter on the right is the variac voltage, the meter on the left is what's actually feeding the resistor from the selenium rectifier. Okay so let me uh, start bringing this up. I also have the radio turned on maximum volume. I have it on the AM band. All my tubes are in, in the uh, sockets in place. And this is not looking very good. This is not looking very good at all. I'm already up to 35 volts AC and you see I'm only up to like this real slow climbing now. I have a feeling we got a really tired selenium rectifier. It's, it's coming up but boy is it slow. Alright so let me just keep bringing it up. And we get up a little higher we'll get lucky. Yeah, this is a big difference. Right about now we should be probably about 50, 55 volts DC. And we're only at a little over 31. Let me just bring it up some more. And so far there's nobody home. at the full supply voltage here. Now my AC supply is usually right around 120 volts give or take a volt. It's usually not, it doesn't fluctuate too much. It's actually pretty good around here. And I can, I think I could say without hesitation that we, we don't even have enough enough juice to even get the radio going. I'm actually hearing a very, 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 very faint hum right now. I don't know if you could hear that or the camera's picking that up. So I think uh, we can say without uh, without hesitation, we got to definitely we're going to have to probably replace this anyway. Okay, here's what I just done. I basically took the, the anode side of the original selenium rectifier and I snapped it off and I've added this, this uh, 1N 4007 just good old general purpose 1 amp diode and instead of running it through the 130 ohm resistor which usually comes with the radio just for added safety I have two 100 ohm 2 watt resistors that are in series for a grand total of 200 ohms. So I just I'm just doing that in in just for safety, and then we're going to uh, bring up the voltage again and just see uh, how that's going to work out. And we're off. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. I have the DC side clipped on the wrong side. I had it after resistor. I wanted it to be before the resistor. Okay. Now we're good. 
So again, here's the variac voltage on the right, and then the voltage from the selenium rectifier on the left. So let me just keep bringing it up. The radio is turned on. I do have an antenna on it. And you see the difference now? The DC voltage is significantly higher, which is a good thing. Keep bringing it up. Okay, now I got a pretty large dropping resistor in there, so I'm not really hearing anything yet. But again, I just did that for safety. Wow. That's beautiful. Okay. So obviously I gotta check some things out here as to why the radio isn't playing now. <laughs> It's probably, like I said, I probably got too big of a dropping resistor on now. Oh! I just wiggled the 1L6 in the socket. Oh, there we go. Now we got something. Alright, so this is a good thing. There's some hum there, but there's a station as well, so this is a good thing. Okay, so that's half the battle right there. So we've got a player, and that's a good thing. Next thing we need to do is we're going to obviously have to change the filters because uh, you could hear the filter humming while the radio was playing. So we have the four stack filters right here. Let me get, get a little bit better light so we can see it. Okay, right next to that bumblebee cap. So you've got a 60, a 40, a 20, and a 200. All right, so they should all be changed. Some people forget to do this one. There's a 12 under there. You could get away with a 10. I've used 10 and 160, and that'll be okay. So those five electrolytics, and then this is what I would recommend. Sometimes there's a bumblebee cap over here. This is a Sagamo. This is one of these pink deals. Okay, that's a .047. I would want to change that one. There's another .047, which is a bumblebee. And if you remember my bumblebee cap video, you know how I feel about that. We want to change that one as well. Okay. There's uh it'd probably be a good idea to change this one over here. That's going to one side of the uh, switch on the volume control. This is a point oh one. Should change that as well. Okay, before we actually do the test, I just uh wanted to show a few things here. Uh of course these nice bright yellow capacitors are brand new. I took out the bumblebees and what was in here and I put them in. Also here was the old uh, filter cap right here. It was four, basically four pieces and uh, basically I've done away with that. And what I did was I removed the old selenium rectifier that was mounted right here and I mounted up a, uh, a terminal strip and what I did with that was it, or what it allowed me to do was to kind of kind of nicely move some of the capacitors over here where there's a little bit more room to work with over here. So I got this uh, pointer right now, this the uh, this the 40, which is actually a 47. Uh, this blue one here is a 220. That's in lieu of the uh, the original 200 that was in there. This is a uh, basically I have two 33s tied together in parallel to make it 66 microfarad, and that was in lieu of the 60. And then I've got a 22 in lieu of the 20 back in the corner over here. And I've tried to put it in such a fashion now, hopefully I'll try to get it away from, because eventually what, what we're going to do is we're going to put 
a resistor or resistors in here for the voltage drop and I just kind of want to keep the heat away as best I can move that out of the way a little bit and uh, hopefully that'll go okay so what I'm going to do is uh, let me get uh, let me clipped up here now originally before um, I, I had a 200 ohm resistor original one was, was 130 uh, what I have here is I've got a on the bench I've got a on the right here this is a 100 and this is 68 so I got these tied up in series that'll be 168 ohms and they're each two watt resistors so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clip these in and then we're going to take our measurements and uh, see what that looks like okay I'm back to having the uh, meters hooked up uh, left meter again is going to be in DC what that's going to do is we're actually going to take the voltage reading at this end of the circuit past uh, what would be the, where it says on the schematic there you have the 75 and the 55 that was the original 130 ohm resistor past the selenium rectifier so right there where it shows 105 volts that's where we're going to be taking our reading See, what from what you got to do is you got to try this for trial and error you could you even go with a 150 ohm resistor which is a more common value you can start with that I'm just trying to be a little on a little bit more uh, conservative well you can actually hear the radio playing okay I'm almost at 120 volts and I've got about 101 and a half volts which is a little bit low get now on the DC end keep bringing it up you guys hear me from time to time talk about how I've had trouble sleeping in the past pillows will go flat and then you end up tossing and turning all night long okay you want to know something? It's a little over 120 volts. But look at the DC side. I'm a little over 105. And for 105 volt spec, I think that's going to be a winner. And the radio's playing. So we're going to go with this one here. This is the 150 ohm 5 watt resistor. Okay, well that's pretty much it for today, and uh, basically my apologies again for the delay between videos. And that's really all there is to it as far as just trying to get uh, get that right. Maybe cleaning the band switch too, I'll show you the importance of getting that all set up and uh, cleaned up and ready to go. So, anyway, hey, thanks for watching, and uh, take care. Bye.